actual oh, one. Oh, we're back. We're back. We made it. It's still 11 o'clock. I liked last, we're good. last week. So, I thought that so was did good. I. It was just, it was 11 minutes. <laughs> well. But, you know, it's all right. Maybe we'll plan something better for March. Yeah. I don't know. Are you good? We're good. Okay. We're on. Is the volume off? The volume is off. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Yeah. Is that off? I okay, think good. Charlie's here. There we go. I'm not saying anything to good anybody. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. I'm not, I'm not looking morning, at any Linda. comments. Good morning, Diana. Okay, since we're all here, um, just real quick, in case you're new here, welcome. It's 2022. Yay! And um, it's I I consider this our first official official. Okay. Like last week we were here, but this is like our official official. So in case you're new, or in case you forgot, or you never knew to begin with, <laughs> I'm Jessica. <laughs> Just Jess is fine. Um, that's all that I prefer. Not Jesse or Jennifer or anything that's not no. my name. Jessica or Jess. <laughs> and Barb and Marlene, just so you can actually put names with faces, are just going to introduce themselves quick so that you can know which one is which because you probably hear their voices where they sign your packing slips and you don't know. Marlene, come on. Show them your pretty face. Show my face. Marlene. Hi, I'm Marlene, or Mean Marlene, whatever mean you want to call me. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And Miss Barb. I'm the clicker. She's on the computer. <laughs> Careful, there's a cord. She's also the tripper. <laughs> Hello, Hi. I'm Barb. Yes. With my good friend Jessica. <laughs> if she's nice to us. I am. <laughs> I she am. Is. Best boss around. <laughs> You all heard that. So <laughs> something that you also might have found out last week is that um, I am a giant. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Um, technically, I'm only five foot six, but everybody here thinks oh, that right. I am gigantic because they are very short. So <laughs> it's whatever way you want to go. Are they short? Am I really tall? I don't know. But um, looking at the video and looking at the fact that I am towering over them, it's really hard to tell. I'm not that tall. I just want to make that real clear. I'm not like six feet tall. They're just really, really short. So I wanted to let you guys know oh, that. I like this one. Oh, wait a second. Oh, Let's boy. This one. <laughs> Shelly says, I'm coming to you from my chilly garage where I'm climbing a virtual mountain on my bike. Looking forward to the Barb and Marlene, Marlene show. show. <laughs> yeah. Shelly. All right, Shelly. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you know what? And in classic Jessica form, I forgot my notebook. Could you give me a notebook? Where is it? It's over there. <laughs> It has two yellow pieces of paper stuck in it and notes on it. Hey, that's what you get. Nothing has changed. Nope. So, <laughs> so just a few quick things, and then we're going to get into interfacing. Um, um, interfacing? Any, uh, it's a regular size notebook. This one? Yes. Yes, I think. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, <laughs> yes, this is it. Nope, it. they're right there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So, if you're new, <laughs> this is normal. Oh, uh -huh. I'm never oh, prepared. Oh, oh, there's Hang another one. Away. Okay. Pat Hale says they are short but talented and productive. That's it's right. right. Absolutely. You, Absolutely. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. There you go. Yes. And I guess I'm a giant and I don't know what that means. And somebody so, noticed your new bag set in the back. Yes, I get new stuff. I put some lights up because we're still having an issue with one of our good. lights. I redid, I cleaned up. The office is clean. We're gonna see how long that lasts. So <laughs> Um, for 2022, I don't do resolutions, okay? I'm not that no. person. I don't do that. I'm not going to make goals. For 2022, um, no nonsense. That's kind of, that's kind of my theme. It's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving to the people that are good to me, which is all of you and you. I'm not dealing with the people that aren't good to me because they don't matter at all. Stop hitting. That has to be your resolution. And <laughs> She's always hitting me. I, I got I got new hair, I got a new <laughs> outlook, but I am not, and I'm asking all of you, do not proclaim this year as your year, because we all know what's happened for the last two years. Mm. They merged into one. Don't say 2022 is going to be your year. Just say it's a year. It's a new year. Mm -hmm. it, that's it. Do not tell me that it's going to be the best year ever, because I, we really need to get this COVID stuff over and move <laughs> on. I don't want to say that word ever again in my life. Mm -hmm. So a quick, um, not an apology, but... And to all of you, um, I am a little bit sorry that you didn't get like a full Facebook Live last week. I know you waited. You waited through holidays. Um, I am not sorry to the person that left a vomit emoji on YouTube. You can suck an egg. But to all of you, I am so sorry that it was so quick. But I think, and I don't know about you guys, I'm assuming, I was so overwhelmed in the best way and so excited because... Yeah. We were back here, and we were back with everybody in person, and we were so excited. And there was just this energy mm -hmm. in that room. It was, it was yeah. 
it was just so we are so loud <laughs> we are just yeah. so excited to be together and there was so much productivity not on my side at all marlene got a lot got of a stuff lot done, done which you i already knew done. was going to yeah. happen but yeah. i got quite a bit done yeah, you started a new usual. block of the month i didn't yeah. i did finish something i wanted to show you i'm excited because <laughs> some of you well, think it's that it's time to days. retire <laughs> my michael myers wallet which i don't think it is but some of you do so i made a new day break and it did not take me three days <laughs> let me clarify something so in october at our first in-person retreat i didn't prepare but also i was super busy i never sat down people had a lot more questions than they did this time so going into this one i was like i'm not even gonna try i'm just not gonna try because i'm gonna try to get something done that's not gonna happen i'll bring some some cork and make a day break mm -hmm. I made two. That's as far as I got because they didn't need me as much. It kind of, it was kind of oh, sad. Feeling my feelings were a little hurt because everybody was like, no, we're good. We got it. You know, we'll ask you a question here and there. Uh -huh. So whatever. So the next one I'll fully prepare and then I won't get anything uh, done. Probably. You know? Probably. So yes, we do have one more coming up in March. Mm -hmm. um, it will be here before we know it. But yeah. look at, isn't it cute? I love the plaid. And yeah, I, I love the plaid. I used my, one of my fancy zipper pulls, yeah, yeah, and it says Central Perk from Friends because I love Friends. Mm -hmm. So if Diane Lil is watching, I'm sure she'll like that one too. <laughs> now, did so you I, wear that sweater so that when you I held it up, it no. would coordinate yeah, so nicely? Really. No, I could not decide what I wanted to wear today. <laughs> Cindy and just says your day break matches your sweater. <laughs> it was not intentional. It also matches one of the new zippers that we got, yeah, exactly. and I didn't plan this. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I wish that I was that prepared. <laughs> we all know I'm not that prepared. So we got a couple of restocks in. Um, I just wanted to mention the gunmetal and the antique brass icicles. We got those in again. Some other things that you guys didn't even know we were low on, so I'm not going to mention it. We got two new zipper colors. We got the chocolate with gunmetal, which... I did not think we needed it at first, and then the more I've used it, the chocolate, I love the chocolate, we need gunmetal. So we got chocolate and gunmetal, it's on the website. And we did get the jungle with the rose gold. The dye lot is a little different than the other jungle. I'm still calling it jungle, it's like a little bit brighter, mm -hmm. but dye lots can vary. So we got jungle and rose gold, and some other restocks, and I think that's it. This year, I'm going to try to read my notes and actually pay attention. <laughs> I'm going to try real hard. So look at that. I did that. Number one. Cross off the Number list. Number one. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> we do have six virtual retreats. I did the whole year, and I put them all out there, and I've gotten some signups already. So um, what's going to change this year for the virtual is I changed the hours a little bit. We're ending a little earlier on Sunday and starting like an hour later on Friday because I did the last one in December from home. It's not that I don't want to hang out with Barb and Marlene, but it is a pain to try to set up over there with risers and tables. Things mm -hmm. are attached. It just gets messy. So they can sew with us from their homes. Mm -hmm. You can sew with us from your home. And I'm going to sew at my home. And my dogs were actually cooperative last time, mm -hmm. which is crazy. So um, I'm going to be sewing at my house. So that's why we started a little bit later. That way I have time to get home. So um, they're on the website. They're on the retreats page. Uh, the March in-person retreat is sold out mm -hmm. because we're so much fun. We had so much yeah. fun in January <laughs> that a whole bunch of people signed up and I ran over to Barb and I said, don't let anybody else sign up because <laughs> we're full. So we are all full, which is awesome. So see, look at that. I'm going. Now, do I have anything else I need to say before we talk about interfacing? That's a good question. Okay. Oh, um, two quick little things. Decor Bond and Fusible Tape are out of stock right now on the website. I'm just mentioning they are on order. They will be in soon. And some of the corks that are out of stock will also be coming in. So don't worry. That's it. Okay. So that's it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just double checking. You made Pat Hill uh, happy. Chocolate and gunmetal. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly why I got it. Was just because of Pat Hale. So my day is made because Pat's happy. There so you go. is Helene watching? Mm -hmm. Um, Helene, I will one hundred percent change the name of the April retreat if you sign up. Um, I'm just letting you know that. So Helene sent me an email and just let me know because I didn't know because I'm terrible at checking things out that her birthday is the weekend of the April retreat. So I think we should oh, change okay. it to Helene's birthday bash because June so. is my birthday bash. Yeah. And then we can we can entice Helene to come if she wants to spend her birthday with us. You know, I mean, I don't know why she wouldn't. But <laughs> Jenny has a question about yes. the in-person retreats, which yes. I will be meeting with them 
in the next few weeks yes. to see if we can get some dates set up for it? Is that the question? Is yeah. dates? What yeah, we're waiting. Situation? We're on hold. And just in case you don't understand the area that we live in, um, we kind of are restricted to before spring and yeah. late fall because we live in a touristy area. And so the air like between here and where we have the retreat there aren't enough hotels with space for us mm -hmm. we need a big room the hotels that have the big rooms do a lot of weddings they do a lot of september october weddings they do a lot of spring mm -hmm. weddings mm -hmm. summer is a nightmare here because it's yeah. all tourist yeah. so that's why it's hard for us to plan certain things and both of the hotels that bar books retreats that are both having renovations yeah. so we're at a standstill right now we don't have anything else planned but we will yeah. i just can't tell you what it is right now barb does her own retreats and then i do a couple i kind of piggyback onto her retreats so we do want to do more we just don't yeah. have answers right now as soon as i get dates yes we'll let you know we're just we're we're, <laughs> we're hopeful that these renovations are a good thing or that it doesn't somewhere else. right that it doesn't mean <laughs> they're booked solid and prices are tripled you yeah. know we're hoping it's all it all benefits all of us um you know we did one at each hotel like i did bar's mm -hmm. done more than that they both were fantastic so hopefully we can go forward and they'll be great so mm -hmm. we hope to have dates for you in the near future yep in the meantime virtual because virtual means you don't have to leave your house and you can wear sweatpants the whole weekend it's <laughs> wonderful right. so um, but you do have to cook for yourself. You do though, well, you? yeah. But I make him order food and just bring well, it home, so it though. works. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna ask you to do me one favor. If we get any questions pertaining to the interfacing, I'm talking yeah. about that oh, moment. Well. Let me know. But oh, if it's okay. like a general question, hold it to the end, yep. and then we'll go over it. So, I wanted to talk about interfacing today for a couple reasons. Um, even though we have had several discussions about it um, throughout the two years that we've been doing, like I think we're going on two. It'll be two years in May which is crazy to yeah, me. Yeah. In that time, we've talked about interfacing a lot, but it is still the number one question that I get asked on Facebook, in emails, everywhere. There's always a question about interfacing. And so I figured it's always a good thing to have a refresher, even if you've watched all of those videos. But it's also great because we do have a lot of new people watching and new followers on YouTube. And, you know, so I wanted to talk about interfacing again. So I want to talk about the interfacings I love and use and sell some of the other ones that I have tried, and I have two packages that I have not opened, have not tried, Ooh. some new interfacings that we're gonna check out together, live on camera. And you know, Ooh, if, wow. you, if you haven't been here before, <laughs> I don't follow instructions. No. I do not try to make my life harder, even if that ruins the product. So I will tell you if it mm -hmm. works or if it doesn't work. So let's start with the basics. Let's start with the stuff that I carry. And let me also explain to you why I do what I do. And I can't speak for other pattern designers. I would never do that because I don't know how other people do what they do. But when it comes to writing patterns, the reason that I use what I use or tell you to use a certain combination, tell you not to interface something, um, tell you to cut it short in a seam is because I found that that worked when I was testing the pattern. I found that it worked on my domestic machine. I don't test on my um, semi-industrial, on my HD9. I use it all the time, but I don't test on it because not everyone has that. You guys both have domestics. Most of you have domestics. If you're really big into bag making, you might have a semi-industrial or an industrial, but because that's not across the board, I do test everything on my domestic. And I try to make sure that what I'm telling you in the pattern is going to work for 99.9% .9 of you. There's always gonna be someone that has a machine that's still struggling or that maybe is new and isn't understanding something. I don't know about other designers. I don't know what their thought process is, so I only speak for myself. I have only ever really used two different kinds of interfacing because number one, they're easy to find. Number two, I know that they're gonna give me the results that I want. But please remember that just because I like it, you can like something else. Interfacing to me and finding the ones that work is kind of like finding that perfect recipe. That dinner that you can make over and over again that it works, you know it's a go-to, it's gonna work for you. It might work for me, Marlene, it might not work for. She might wanna do it a little bit differently. Barb might not like it at all and wanna use something different, it doesn't matter. So the ones that I always use, and I have them already fused to pieces and I have them separate, and I'll talk about why I like them and, and I also know that some of you don't like them 
that's okay. Um, and we'll go through those and then we're gonna find out if we need to start carrying a new interface in, cause you never know. Oh I'm always open. Oh so as we get into the newer ones, if you have used them and you love them, please tell me. Because if it's something that I should start stocking, I am happy to do so, but I'm not gonna do it just for one of you. I wanna know if you're like, I've used it and I love it, I can't live without it, I'll start stocking it. So one of the things that we do carry and I don't use, <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of weird, is SF-101, which is Shape Flex. But I use it. I use Barb it. uses it, Marlene uses it, and what do you use it for? T-shirt quilts. <laughs> okay, so not a bag, but they do like it. But here is the thing, and I don't have, I don't have any problems with Shape Flex at all, but I'm gonna explain to you why I don't use it, okay? Bag makers everywhere love Shape Flex. Shape Flex is a woven interfacing, which means it is like a piece of fabric. It has one side that has glue on it. You adhere it to your fabric. So I have, I did everything on um, Essex Linen because Essex Linen's a little bit light. It does fray a little bit, like more than cotton fabric. So I did everything based on Essex Linen because mm -hmm. I use it a lot for linings. So I fused a piece to the Essex Linen. So here it is, nothing. Here is with Shape Flex. So when you're adding a woven interfacing, it still feels like fabric. It still moves like fabric. It just makes it a little bit beefier. My issue with Shape Flex is that to me, it just doesn't feel like it's doing enough. But that is why many bag makers now, because back years ago, people were just using Shape Flex by itself. I just use that in the lining. To me, it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why I avoided it. Now, a lot of people are using this as step one. So I've got my fabric, I'm using a cotton quilt weight or a linen, I put Shape Flex on just to start. It's kind of just like the base level. Now I'm gonna add another interfacing to it. And I don't have any problems with that, except for the fact that I'm cheap and lazy. Mm. And those are two of the key qualities of my personality. <laughs> I don't like, I don't wanna do an extra step if I don't have to. Like I, one, from one point to the other, you wanna go in a straight line, I don't wanna do this, I wanna go right there. So that's why I don't use a lot of Shape Flex. I've really only used it when I've had a really thin, thin fabric that I was trying to make look nicer. I had a panel by a quilt fabric company, not even like a Joann's panel. It was like, bleh. it was very yeah. flimsy and kind of see-through. So I put Shape Flex on it and then I went forward. So a lot of people use Shape Flex as like step one and then they're gonna add more to it, which is fine. When you put the Shape Flex on, it does help it with fraying. Mm -hmm. Like it's not fraying as much. It adheres really nicely, and whenever I am adhering pretty much any interfacing, I work with the iron on the fabric side. Shape Flex is cotton. You can put the iron on the back side. It's fine. So I think, pretty sure, some of the things I have today are kind of Shape Flex alternatives, so we'll get into those too. So Shape Flex is great. It's not something I call for in any of my patterns. So let's say that you love shape flex or you're using cotton and it's not quite enough this is kind of too flimsy in uh the diva wallet for card pockets or i'm trying to think so any pattern where i just use a piece of fabric and i don't interface it because i'm trying to cut down on bulk you can add this it's not adding a lot of bulk it, stops the it does stop the stretch the it's still thing. very drapey oh, it's yeah. not hurting yeah. anything shape flex is actually geared towards apparel so remember, if I'm gonna wear it, it's gonna be soft. You know, I'm gonna have like that that drapiness to it, analogy. right? Perfect. Yeah. If it's gonna go in my clothing, I don't want it to be stiff. So Shade Flex is great. It's not high on my list, okay? So don't be mad at me for that. Here is something that a lot of you hate. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> decor bond. I, and I understand, okay? I understand why you don't like it. And decor bond for me, here's my decor bond analogy. I love analogies. Decor bond is my dog, Roxy. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. It drives you crazy. But in the end, I love it. I do. I do. And I try to convince all of you, she's a really sweet girl. She's a good girl. <laughs> decor bond's good. Give it a chance. I'm going to tell you how to make it work better for you. So here's a piece of decor bond. Okay. So again, plain fabric. Here's my decor bond. Not so flexible. This is made for bag makers. I don't want to wear this. This is going to be a stiff piece of clothing. But that's why I like it. So Decor Bond was one of the first interfacings I ever used 15 plus years ago in bag making. When you use it the first time and you like it, you stick with it. That's true of anything. So I used it, I liked it, my machine liked it, I could use several layers of it, I could fold a handle into fours, I can use it on the outside, on the inside. So that is why I go towards Decor Bond. 
Some of you do not like decor bunch, probably a lot of you, and I understand why. <laughs> First of all, sometimes it is a nightmare to get it to stick. I don't know why. I don't know what it is that they do to this piece of interfacing that just makes it a pain. But when I iron decor bond, and I do have my iron here for the new stuff, I don't iron on the decor bond side unless I absolutely have to. I iron on the fabric side. The bigger the piece, the bigger the pain. It's the way it is. The, a road trip bag with a big piece of lining, it, it's a pain. The, yes. Is the Corbin the interfacing for the Beaver wallet? It's the um, interfacing for every single pattern that I use, okay? <laughs> she said she used it with Art Gallery fabric and it instantly created bubbles and wrinkles. I'm going to explain to you <laughs> why, okay? Because there's, first of all, when you get the Corbin and you get it, and it has this little thing right here, this little this little green <laughs> piece of paper, I want you to throw it in the garbage. Mm. And Decor Bond, by the way, is 809. Somebody, and I have the question, I have a question for later, had just referred to it as, as 809. What is 809? 809 is Decor Bond. So if you ever just see one or the other, that's what it is. I don't usually call it by the number, I just call it Decor Bond. People have told me that there is more than one product called Decor Bond, and that is incorrect. And I'm going to also explain to you why you believe that, because <laughs> it's not true. Um, if you go on the Pellon website and you type in the search bar Decor Bond, they put a whole bunch of interfacings that are similar to it. So in your brain, you're like, oh, these are all Decor Bond. They're not. They have different names for all of them. They just make it confusing and instead of just pulling up one product, they're like, here's craft views and here's this and here's that. These are all like the same. So decor bond, one of the other reasons I love it, it's 45 inches wide. So it's the same width as my fabric, which means I don't have to piece it. I don't have to, you know, put multiple pieces together. But here's the reason why things bubble, why it doesn't stick. Most of your uh, fusible interfacing, especially this one for some reason, it's not always about the heat and the steam. It's about consistent pressure, which is why, and I'm not saying you have to have one, but a heat press makes a huge difference. If you are really gonna get big into bag making and selling and you're doing a lot of fusible interfacings, consider if you have the space that you might wanna get a heat press. I do have one. I have a quick video on YouTube about it. It's not for everybody. It's not a necessity. You could do all of this with an iron, but it does make a big difference. Now a heat press doesn't have steam, but it has consistent heat on the entire plate. There's no holes like an iron and it's consistent pressure. And it's the pressure and the consistent heat that make it stick better. So when I am ironing and I take my iron, I don't do a lot of this. I don't keep the iron moving. I kind of do this and then I do that. So I'm not just like holding it in place. You hold it in place, you're going to wrinkle and you're gonna bubble. So I kind of just like tap it around, the get it stomp. kind of stuck. The elephant stomp. Exactly, and <laughs> then I'm kind of rolling it. Cause if you do this first, what happens is you stretch your fabric. And if you hold it for too long and you do this whole, let me count to some number, <laughs> you wrinkle things. So I pat it down, I elephant stomp, I get it situated so it's not gonna move. And then I kind of move it around. And then I take my clapper. If you don't have a heat press, don't want a heat press, don't have room for a heat press, get a clapper. Because after I have ironed it, now I'm ironing on the fabric side, I use my clapper. This is going to warm up and it's going to use that pressure and it's going to have consistent heat and it cools down a little bit slower. So I will use that as I'm going. I will iron, put it down, iron, move it over and kind of move it around the spots. If I find that I have a wrinkle or a pucker or anything that I can't get rid of, I get it in there with the iron, with the nose of the iron, and I immediately put this on there. Sometimes I'll even push it down because it helps to flatten it out and it helps to, to smooth it. What you're doing is letting the wood absorb heat, your ironing surface is absorbing the heat, your fabric in the middle is cooling slower and it has pressure on it. So you don't have to have a heat press. I love mine. Marlene loves using it. It's fun, especially because we do, you know, like kits for shows um, where we have to prefuse things or we're doing big pieces of fabric. It really does make a difference. But I know it's a big unit. It doesn't fit everywhere. And there, I think I spent about 300 bucks. It's not in everyone's budget. Yes. Marilyn would like to know what brand you have of heat press. It is the E 
photo ink and i believe that's all one word together you can search it on amazon it's a 15 by 15 heat press it's blue you'll see the top of it's blue um so i found it because a quilt shop i was teaching at was using it for um t-shirt quilts because they were making a lot of t-shirt quilts and someone had said i wish there was like we could do this quicker so they were doing the squares with that so then of course they had it and said i wonder if it would work on interfacing it's amazing i absolutely mm -hmm. love it and there's a bunch of brands that's the one that i used so that's the one that i bought i think my husband bought it for me probably two christmases ago maybe three and i want to say it was like 289.99 something like that totally worth it if you have the space for it unfortunately i don't have a space where i can leave it up all the time or i would use it more but we don't have space here and the studio is a little bit limited but i do use it quite a bit is there anything specific you would look for in a heat press um not no i mean most of the heat presses are pretty consistent most of them have a lever where you pull it down some of them have um i think it's the racoma no, not Recoma. That's an embroidery machine. There's another one that it kind of locks in place just until like the until the timer goes off. They're they're pretty much consistent across the board. The 15 by 15 I think works for me. I've seen people get those long skinny um, like the Singer ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know how good those are because I haven't used one. This one is made for like heat transfers. So it's not made for sewing, and I think sometimes that actually is a benefit. Some of the sewing ones are kind of long and skinny, like small ironing boards. They seem awkward to me, where this is a square, and mm. it's meant for heat transfer. Mm. So the top is metal, and the bottom has like a rubber on it. it <laughs> that won't burn your hand. Watch the top part, mm. though. But when you pull it down, you just leave it. It beeps at the seconds that you've... Um, put it on for and I don't remember offhand I do have it in my YouTube video which is like less than 10 minutes I tell you what the brand is where I got it and what temperature settings that was a trial and error thing so I figured out what worked for decor bond um Marlene has a question Marlene was doing some kits for me a while ago where I needed to pre-fuse and she was doing the interfacing and then the fleece no issues it like it doesn't wrinkle mm. bubble it doesn't the interfacing doesn't curl up it's just it's because it's consistent yes she wants to know she could stop by and try using it <laughs> I, come on over i mean it's we're always here oh, i know glad. it's you're, you're in jersey <laughs> i know it's kind of a drive but come on over helene you get over here so um i it's definitely a good tool but it's not a necessity so seriously use your iron and try a clapper try a clapper first i find that it's made a huge difference in how the interfacing sticks so one thing with decor bond and i know it's not going to pick up on camera but this one i ironed on the back can you see can you see the burn marks yes i can mm -hmm. so i burned it because i just let the iron sit i was trying to make it wrinkle and it yes. never wrinkles when i want it to <laughs> of course but not. can you see that the glue's not sticking because i overdid it I used too much heat for too long because I left the iron and I just kind of mm -hmm. sat there and text and did whatever on my phone. It was too much. I singed it and more often than not, what happens is it does this mm -hmm. and it wrinkles up. And you know what? I'm going to try it again. I'm going to get my glasses all steamed up, but I'm going to see if I can ruin this because it's fun. We'll just leave <laughs> that sit there. Oh but God, call the fire department. decor bond <laughs> and fusible interfacings, I always oh do on the front. It's steaming. <laughs> It's steaming. It's steaming already. Right. I, mean, I don't want to burn my ironing surface. It's so pretty. Let's see. Is it doing anything? No, because it's not going to do what I want it to do now. Of course not. But I find that I get more wrinkles and more issues when I iron on the decor bond side. What if I have to, though? What if I have to use it on the decor bond side? I take my iron and I kind of sweep it across. I don't leave it sitting there for too long. I kind of sweep it across and use the clapper. Definitely. But... Can you see that now I put even more heat on? It's like it's ruined. It's the glue yeah. is not, yeah. this one's not coming off. Like this one's on there because I only iron on the front. Okay, we got a few questions. Okay, 809 questions? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. let's bring them on. Yeah, so oh, look how, look how yellow that is. Yeah. I burned <laughs> it. Ew, ew. <laughs> and burned it. Yes. Do you find it better to fuse on a hard surface instead of a cloth covered ironing board? Yes. And let me, let me side note that too. And Sue Smith and I think, I think we had this talk a little while ago, back a few years ago when the wool mats were the big craze. Mm -hmm. And I do love my wool mats still. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. 
I fell in love with it because it made my interfacing adhere better. Mm -hmm. Something changed in the formula of Decorban. I swear the, I swear, yeah. Pelon is trying to ruin me because every time something works, they're like, we're going to mess with the formula. Something changed in the formula, and now the wool mat makes it worse, and it makes it yeah. um, wrinkle the way that the wool mat is. So this surface that I'm using right now, which I've showed you guys before, I, can't, I can kind of show you. This one, you remember this from some of my videos? It's from TNT Quilt Boards. It is a minimal amount of batting underneath there. It's yeah. like, it's pretty hard. I find a hard surface is way better. The cushy ones, they just don't do it. So Some people say they use cutting boards. Cutting board. <laughs> I like a nice firm surface. I don't want anything yeah. squishy for ironing, especially no. for interfacing. And I don't think it's good for your quilts either. Cause you're going to get like, like weird surface. divots. I don't like and spongy ironing boards. Okay. No. Next question. Uh, how do you get all the wrinkles out of the decor? Ha! <laughs> huh. Yeah, I have, I have a solution for that, too. Yeah. Okay. Because um, often this is what the end of the bolt looks like or worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Barbara on. likes to take irons to things, but she won't do it to that. Yeah, you can. I'm going to show you how. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I have before so ship much stuff here. No, not before okay. we ship it. But here's the thing. We have a scrap box over there of interfacing because mm -hmm. we try not to send you the end of the bolt. Mm -hmm. When it gets down to the very end it's and the there's best. like a big... <laughs> Barb usually just tosses it and puts it in there because I'll use it. So I take my iron, and yes, I'm going to make some of you very unhappy right now. And you can't see my iron on screen, can you? My board? Right now, no. Okay, well, nope. just go with me here. So I have my decor bond fusible side down on my ironing surface because I don't want it on the iron. I'm literally going to sweep, and I just kind of sweep. Like really, really quick. See how that, oh, yeah. oh. I'm just, I either, it depends on the size oh, of the piece. If I can, down. you want to show them? Yeah. Okay. Tip that down. Cause they won't understand. Okay. Sweep. Are, are you good? Okay. <laughs> She's going to sweep. Okay. If it's so legal and it's me. I either sweep it like this. I'm very, very gentle or I just kind of pull it and pull it. So yes, it's fusible side down, but it's not hot enough. It's, it's not on here cool. because it's not on long enough. It's not on there long enough that it's doing anything. So, oh, who knew? Just like yeah. that. So, it at least helps you yeah. to get it to the cutting part, right? Yeah. So, um, that's how I do that. I would not put this in your press because you're going to either press it together or press it to the, the plates of the press. But I just do that. My ironing board, it's not sticky. There's nothing on there. So, I just I sweep it. I don't know. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, thank you for tipping the camera because I'm yeah, sure that helps. Yeah. Did um, that make sense? <laughs> you sweep it. Sweep okay. it. Next question. Would yes. you use decor bond with wax canvas? I find wax canvas to be slouchy, especially in the bottom of a bag. How Is can that I Elena? Make the bottom four inches. Is this quilting in Romania? Oh, okay. Bottom um, four inches more sturdy. I'm going to pause that question and we're going to answer that at the end because somebody else had emailed me that and yeah. I just want to talk because I have a piece of wax canvas. I want to talk about that as well. Um, so we're going to come back to wax canvas. I promise. Um, Anything else for decor bond? Have you, oh no, that's just on the, on the cutting board thing. People do it on a cutting board. Hang on. Thank you. I <laughs> uh, love my TNT board. Great subject. Good. I don't see any more questions. Okay. And no. I also, because I have some oh, it new. Was Elena. That's her name. Oh, okay. Elena. I'm sorry. I always know you. I know well, you. It was... comes up as quilting and rolling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to um, remember your name. Sorry. I do have it written down, and I'm going to do the questions at the end. So don't worry. I'm going to get back to that. Um, I also just wanted to let you know prices while we're talking about things. So I forgot to tell you the Shape Flex is 20 inches wide. That's another beef that I have with it. It's about 450 yeah. a yard cotton. Decor bond is 45 inches wide and it is six dollars a yard. So typically your non-fusibles, your polyester based um, interfacings are typically a little bit less in price. Plus for six dollars a yard, I'm getting double the width. So that's what I'm that's one all. more question. Yes. How does it hold up when birthing? <laughs> as long as because this is another thing that also drives people crazy, uh -huh. but personally, I find that this happens with everything. When birthing, um, if you have adhered, I'm so sorry about the phone. We lost our, our cell phone broke, so I have to listen to that until they hang oh, up really? or until Eric answers the phone. Um, <laughs> when 
birthing anything with fusible interfacing, it's going to wrinkle. This is why you want to make sure that it is adhered as well as you can. Because what's going to happen, you're turning a bag and it's not adhered that well. And as you're turning and pulling, it's pulling apart and it's making a mess. Your fabric's getting stretched out. Your interfacing's not stuck. So for me, as long as it's adhered really well, yeah, I'm going to get wrinkles. I'm going to get wrinkles with anything. This is Shape Flex. I'm going to get wrinkles. Mm -hmm. It's not, you can't avoid that if you're going to birth a bag. The only way to avoid that is to do a drop in lining and we all know how I feel about those. So here's the thing, just like I showed you with the iron and the clapper for putting it on the fabric, I use the iron and the clapper to get out all of the creases after I've turned the bag. Plus, I'm sorry to break this to you, but <laughs> you're going to use your bag. It's going to get dirty and wrinkled and worn. That's how it goes. They're not indestructible. Mine look great because no one touches them. <laughs> it's a totally different thing. They wouldn't look the same if I was using them. So you are going to get some wrinkles. If you have done your interfacing properly, you shouldn't be getting anything too crazy, but get a sleeve board. You a uh, nice sleeve board. I bought one from Amazon not that long ago because I had broken the other one that I had. What I like about it is it's wide on one side, narrow on the other. It's fixed in the middle, so it's not a collapsible one. Put your bag right over that. Use your, your iron and your clapper, you know, and use it. Put it inside the bag where the interfacing is. Elena has a suggestion. When she did her Diva wallet, she got a wooden rod, heated the rod up, and then closed the wallet around it. It helped with the wrinkles in the fold area of the wallet. That's clever. I've yeah. never even thought about no. that. And that is another thing. When you have a permanent fold, like in the middle of the Diva wallet, you are going to get some creases there. Oh, yeah. It's very unavoidable. Or it's, it's not easy to avoid that because it's going to keep closing in the same mm -hmm. spot. What you did sounds really clever, and I think that would be fun to try. Um, but eventually, yes, you're going to get wrinkles. And sometimes... I am super anal about a lot of things, but I've learned to let go of certain things <laughs> because what are you going to do about it? It's in the lining of my bag. It's in the inside. You know, like, well, I only want to hand stitch the bottom of the bag. No. Who sees that? <laughs> things that I've learned to let go. So that is decor bunch, 809. Um, let's go to now my actual new favorite. And I only have one, uh -oh. I only have one bad thing to say about this. And I'll tell you is actually Decoville Light. I, I love Decor Bond. I really love this one. Like, I, I love Decoville Light. My complaint about Decoville Light is that it's 17 inches wide. Mm -hmm. Who did that to us? That is stupid. And I understand, but a lot of bags, 17 inches works. Well, when you're making handles, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like that. It's the one thing I don't like about Decoville Light. But ever since I tried this, I fell in love with it. I absolutely, I love it. So... Here is, okay. What's the again, number on the Decoville Light? Decoville Light is 525. Five. 525 is light. And there is a heavy, which I also have. Not here, but we'll talk about that. Plain fabric. Where is my decor bond? Decoville Light. Okay. They move similarly, but Decoville Light's a little tiny bit heavier. Plus, it fuses like magic because it doesn't have. I think of Decor Bond as having like glue sprinkled on mm -hmm. it. It's like little little tiny like dots. That's where the Deco Veil is like, it's it's like a piece of tape. It's sticky all the way across. So when you adhere the Deco Veil light, it goes so much quicker. It adheres really nicely. And again, I do it on the fabric side. Deco Veil light, even though it's also a polyester based product, which hold on, I'll tell you exactly what's in it. Cause it's not all polyester. And I'm not a scientist, so I don't know what any of these things mean. It is 45% polyester, 30% viscose, and 25% polyamide. I'll have to ask my sister what that means. <laughs> it's made in Germany. It's 17 inches wide, and it is $10 a yard. It, you it's, can put the iron on the back of this. I mean, I'm not sitting there holding it on yeah. forever, but you can iron on the back, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do the things Decor Bond does. So, unfortunately for Decor Bond and my relationship, we're still in good standing. But Decoville Light has kind of kicked Decor Bond to the side. I still, I use Decor Bond when I do kits. I use it in most of my samples for another reason that Decoville Light made me a little angry about. We couldn't find it. We couldn't mm -hmm. find it forever. And when I, when I do yardage for a bag, I don't factor in that this is less than half the width. So if we were doing a kit, it would be taking so much Decoville to do that kit. And really? <laughs> 
It's one of you, right? Like, you have something to tell me in private. <laughs> and the Decoville light was out of stock for so long, it literally just finally updated and says in stock. Finally, after like two yeah. years, they would never even make it say in stock. So I was ordering 10 and 20 bolts at a time. I still have 10 to pick up. I still have 10 that are here. I just haven't brought them we here. Through it quickly, We've gone through so many. Like we went through two boxes in like a heartbeat. I love Decoville Light. I absolutely love it. If I had to pick a favorite, I would pick it. I just wish that Decoville Light and Decor Bond could have a baby. And the baby <laughs> would be 45 inches wide. And 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 it would just and it would be wonderful. But it That's also both worlds. It, right. It doesn't fold the same way because this is Doesn't the width. Like it. This is the width yeah. where the decor bond is folded in half on the bolt. So the Decoville just has almost like a leathery kind of a feeling, mm. even in the light, and it doesn't want to like fold. It doesn't wrinkle the same. Like if it's gonna wrinkle, but look at that versus that. Like mm -hmm. it just it. I don't know. I just like it. I just like it I a like lot. It. I like it a whole lot, and it's very popular in the bag community. And a lot of people like to add it to Shape Flex. <laughs> I just still skip the shape flex because that's Shelly's me. Shelly's upset with you. She goes, how can I tell you what I want to tell you when you won't be the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Shelly, call me later. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you, that phone has not rang all day exactly. until I sit down and do Facebook. And you wonder why the door is locked. So we carry shape flex. We also carry decor bond and decoville light. And the last thing that we carry at the moment because who knows? Thing we never know when anything's going to change. Things change day fleece. to day around here. <laughs> fleece. Now here is another thing. I have. I'm in a couple of other bag groups, and I kind of I lurk and I listen and I might see what people are doing. There are so many people right now that are like, if it calls for fleece or foam, I don't use it. I use Decoville Light. Now to me, they're very different in feel, mm. but I can understand why they do that. Because if I'm looking for something a little beefier, I want something nice and smooth, I want it to be to have form, I can get that from Decoville Light the same way I can from fleece, and I also use it with Decor Bond. I don't like fleece on its own. That to me is just, that's floppy. Flimsy. It's too it's too flimsy. So I don't usually use this by itself, but I have heard a ton of people lately, I totally don't use fleece or foam ever. I just use Decoville Light. Which I understand the reasoning, but it is pain when you can't get it. So one of the things that I have done, <laughs> Sorry, bless you, <laughs> that I have done for years, and I've done this in several of my patterns, is this. So, okay, plain fabric, plain fabric with just fleece, <laughs> decor bond and fleece. Mm -hmm. See how nice yeah. that is? Mm -hmm. So you can also, let's compare this, because I did, I did the bag maker thing. SF101 and Decoville versus Decor Bond and Fleece. They are pretty similar. Yeah. So for structure, I get it. Keep this in mind, even if you're like, oh, I don't like fleece. Keep it in mind in case you can't get the Decoville. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing I've learned about fleece because I hear a lot of complaints. I can't get it to stick. I don't like the fleece. Mm -hmm. Mine stuck, looks mm -hmm. pretty good. Here's what I do. I take my fleece. I put it on the back of my fabric, so this is the glue side, the bumpy side. And on this side, mm -hmm. I just kind of heat it up with my iron. I don't do too much. And then I turn it over and I iron on the fleece side. And I know that it kind of, like you don't really want to do mm -hmm. that, it's a polyester thing, it's gonna shrimp, shrivel, but if you warm the glue first and then turn it over, it adheres really nicely. And it feels thick on the bolt but it compresses really nicely when you iron it on. So don't think, well, it's fusible fleece. It must be thick. I don't want a thick puffy bag. I don't like thick puffy bags. That's not my style. It does compress down really nicely. And for me, my magic recipe, my favorite thing is decor bond and fleece because I love that together. So I use that in a lot of bags. So you don't like either of these and don't want to use either of these. <laughs> use Decoville. Because I would prefer to call for Decoville in the patterns, but I feel really guilty calling for something that's not always available. So does that make sense? You know, it's kind of hard to be like, you have to use Decoville, but you can never buy it. I don't want to do that to you. So those are the things that we have. And some of the other things that I have tried and that I don't carry and I don't intend on it unless there was that much of a need for it. Decoville heavy. <laughs> this is, it's like cardboard. <laughs> I don't want to sew through this unless I'm on my industrial, but think about it. I've made a bag. Now I have 
two layers to top stitch. Mm. Now I have another layer. That's a lot. That's a lot for any machine. I would recommend if you're using this, if you want a super stiff, firm bag or you want to put it in the bottom, cut it out of the seam allowance. Be really careful with this. Don't want to sew through too much of this or too many layers. Like this little boxes that you make. And right. That might be good. For I mean, like any that. of these bags, if you wanted to put the it in the bottom bag. or yeah. if like um, the laurel, because it has like that, that yeah. shape, you could do that. But I wouldn't put it in the seams. This is 526. Decoville Heavy is very, very different from Decoville Light. So be careful if you're online shopping and you're, you just see Decoville, make sure you know which Decoville. And I lost my piece. There it is. That's a big difference. It's like paper yeah, versus cardstock. Yeah. It's going to make a big difference in your bag. So if you're buying online, especially if you don't know who you're buying for, be super careful. When I think it, I'm pretty sure we were still over there doing videos. Somebody had mentioned it. It might have been Charlie. Oh, have you ever tried Decoville? Yeah, I, think I had this and I didn't know there were two of them. And I have no idea why, but I have a bolt of it. It's heavy stuff. Yeah, I don't know have, why I have it. I literally do not. I, it must have been in a haze. I don't know why I bought a bolt of it because I don't use it very often. But someone said Maybe try it and I was like, this is so heavy. And yeah. then I was, I got some clarification. There's two different ones. Mm -hmm. So 525 and 526. And one quick thing before Barb yeah. asked me a question. The that's Decoville good. with the numbers, that's a Pelon thing. Pelon gave Decoville Light 525 and Decoville Heavy 526. The other Decovilles, I don't know if they always have numbers because Decoville is not a U.S. product. It's like from Germany. I think it's a European thing. And some of them, they're still called Decoville, but they come on rolls. What we buy is on a bolt. It's very, it's almost exactly the same. I don't mm -hmm. see any difference. But just in case you order it somewhere and you're like, why is this coming from mm -hmm. Europe? And it's on a roll because it's a European product that we have adapted. Somehow Pelon, I don't know. I don't know any of that no. stuff, but <laughs> that I don't think, and I might be wrong, correct me. I don't think the European version uses the numbers. I think they just have a light and a heavy and I might be wrong about that. Go ahead. You have another question. Well, a couple of comments. Okay. Bobby says she uses the fleece to pad. She used it to pad a small Alice bag for a friend who has a concealed weapon permit. There you go. And it protected the bag from leaving imprints of the weapon. And then Sue Hersey says she uses the heavy just for the bottom and not in the seams. And I think it's an awesome thing because for a long time when I used to do one of my bag 101 lectures, yeah. I would always talk about Peltex. And I was like, you can use Peltex to make bottoms. And Peltex is fine, but Peltex sometimes can be a nightmare because <laughs> it just kind of wants to do its own thing and it's fusible, but it's like, it's really rough and scratchy. Have you ever felt Peltex? It feels yeah. like sandpaper. It still could do the same thing, but if I was going to make the bottom of my bag firm, I'd rather use a Decoville Heavy. So, And I didn't look up that one. I don't know what the retail price is, but I think it's also um, 17 inches. I don't know what I did with the bolt. I was organized when I started. I want that to be noted. You know what I um, used to use in the bottom of my bags? <laughs> Cardboard? No, I used to cut old cutting mats to size and then cover That's it. really smart. <laughs> so Decoville Heavy, and this is Decoville Light. So you can see, definitely a difference. Now, you want Decoville Heavy, but you can't get it. But you have Decoville Light. I did two layers of Decoville Light. Feels just about the same mm. to me. So if you want it really, really, really firm, and you don't want to get another interfacing, you can try two layers of Decoville Light. Mm -hmm. I was having fun experimenting. I guess. I <laughs> was. Really. Yes. I'm also preparing for another bag lecture I have coming up in the uh -huh. future. <laughs> so I'm. I'm. you Not guys sure. get it first and for free. So that You're is the test audience. People. You are the test you audience, but in a good that. way. <laughs> okay. I can't believe. Oh, wow. It's 1148. Well, this makes up for our 11 minute Facebook last there you week. Go. Okay. So let's take a look. Oh, and let me just do this quick before we get into the new stuff. Wax canvas. Elena had asked. Mm -hmm. So wax canvas varies in weight. There's heavier, there's lighter. Ours is a, ours is a more of a lightweight wax canvas. I don't interface wax canvas. You can, I've seen people do it. Just be careful because you have the wax on here. You don't want to get wax on your um, pressing surface or your iron. You can interface it. I don't because I love that look. I like the distressed look and I feel like it's so much less when you put interfacing on it. So how do you use just wax canvas but make a bag a little bit more substantial? Don't use SF-101 as your lining. Like if you're using cotton on the inside and you're just using SF-101, that's not much to go on. That's mm -hmm. like... 
the, mm -hmm. if I'm putting this next to this, my bag is just gonna fall over. So I would use, if you, so you can still use Shape Flex, I would add Decoville Light to it, decor bond, mm -hmm. maybe even fleece. Do something, because your bag structure is not just based on the outside. You can do what you need to do also to the inside. So you can interface, I would over interface my um, lining to make up for the fact that this is kind of soft. Because by itself, this is just gonna kind of sit mm -hmm. and plop over. And if this is all you have on the inside, that's not gonna be enough. Wouldn't you say SF 101 is more for to stabilize stretchy fabrics more yes. than to give it any kind of structure? And like I said before, like, um, you know, with the bag community, yeah. SF 101 is kind of like step one. It's not yeah. the only step. And I think that years ago it was, but now that we have all these other options, it's really hard to, you know, to just use this by itself. This, it's just not enough, you know? Yeah, no, so no. I would think Shape Flex with something else with a non-woven and try that inside of your wax canvas or even if you're using like a lightweight vinyl or a lightweight cork or anything that doesn't have much substance to it, Speaking of cork, I didn't put anything on cork. Yes, I do interface it sometimes. Yes, people think I'm crazy, but I do. Um, I have interfaced it because sometimes where I'm using the cork, I want more. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want, like like the Alice bag, for instance. It's just cork on the outside, but it's a, it's a lightweight little crossover, crossbody bag. It's fine. But now I'm making a Harper, which is a big purse, and the cork is the entire bottom. I don't want it to stretch, and I want the bag to really stand up on its own. I will interface it. Um, it's, it's 10 up. Should we do the new stuff, or should we, we wait till next week? Quick question, yes. and probably wait till next week. Okay. Um, Barb said so. <laughs> unless you guys want me to keep yeah, going, I can. Yeah, to keep going. Whatever. Yes, you tell me. Tell me quick. Barb, what's uh, our question? Gloria would like to know what you would use foam for. Um, foam. Oh, yes. I had the foam in my hand and I didn't show you yeah. anything with it. Nope. So, okay. You vote on it now while I'm talking. Do you want new stuff now or do you want to wait till next week? And, um, I don't care either way. New stuff, new stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, foam, there's different versions of foam. You can use soft and stable by Annie. The by Annie soft and stable. It's not fusible. Pellon has single-sided and double-sided fusible. Um, I like foam. Don't get me wrong. I like I like the foam. It really adds a lot of structure, especially when you're doing like a big bag. Um, the first ever road trip bag, I used foam to test it out. I like how it comes out, but here's the only issue. Most of the time you're not sewing through the foam, you're sewing next to the foam, but let's say I have two layers of it. It's not that it doesn't squish down. I could sew through it very easily. It's oh, smushy. Yeah. But if I'm a new sewer, I might have a hard time knowing that I can squish it, getting it under the foot without it being pressed down. That's pr that's about a half inch of thickness. Most of your foam is mm -hmm. about a quarter of an inch. So the problem is it can be kind of cumbersome when you're holding it. And especially if you're new, when it comes to new bag makers, it doesn't take a lot to deter them to think that they're doing something wrong and it's not working for them. So I love the foam for the structure. I don't really use it in any of my bags. The only time that I use it is when I'm testing patterns because if I need to figure out a size, I cut it out of foam because it will stand up on its own and I can see the size of the bag. If I was using this, let me pick a bag that I think it would be great in. Um, uh, road trip, I think road trip would be great. Yeah. I think Taurus tote bag, this would be a yeah. nice one too because the Taurus tote bag is so simple. Actually, I did use it in did the you? tote and it, re it makes it stand up it nice. Really, and it really, it yeah. really makes it structured because I'm carrying a Taurus tote bag right now with canvas on the top and it's being used. It's softening up a little bit. It's a little bit slumpy and slouchy on the top. This would be great. Also, if you're a quilter and you're learning to free motion quilt, you can oh, yeah. free motion quilt a Taurus tote bag and have the foam in it because it's it's it wants to be quilted. It really does want the stitching to compress it and you to just, make it look better. You just used you just made a bag with the foam. And oh, you did make, did. yeah, you yeah, did at, your... At the retreat. Oh, no, no, oh, that no. was with the fleece, I think. No, you had foam in that. You had oh, yeah, I had foam in it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Marlene just yes. made a duffel bag. It was not one of my patterns. It was a, a different pattern <laughs> and put foam in it, and she quilted it. So yeah. the foam and the soft and stable, they want to be quilted. They, right. they work better when they're quilted. The reason that I was drawn to the fusible foam <laughs> was because I thought, great, now I don't have to quilt it. I'll stick it in the bag. It's not quite the same. It wants to be quilted, but I would use this 
in a simple bag and anything like the laptop bag, the laptop case yep. that I have, I use fleece in it. You could use foam mm. because it's going to add protection. It's not going to protect forever. <laughs> so don't think you yeah. can throw it off a roof, but it's, you know, I mean, you do what you want to do with your things. Um, we had a broken cell phone this week. Maybe the phone would have helped. I don't know. But I, it's good for protection and good for structure. I just don't personally use it because... I don't. I don't really have any reasons for you. That's all. <laughs> I think so you pretty much have to quilt it if it's not fusible. I really feel like you have to. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I forgot about these. Oh, I got, I, I, got I got spark. I got sparkly oh, got purple sparkle clips. clips. They're purple. I bought them They're from um, from Lauren at Mormino. I forgot that I had those. Mm -hmm. They're so special that I don't want to take them out of the bag. <laughs> so I forgot about those. I, I think you I, should share them with her employees. I you? don't. So drink but you would think that i have a problem because all of a sudden i just start buying things online and i don't know when i bought them um okay so the first thing that i ordered and please let me know if you use this and what you think of it because um this i can order wholesale and we can carry but i want to know if you want it and i've never used it i i opened the bag but didn't take it out this is from castine handcrafted i know a lot of you are familiar with her and I bought this because I hear people talk about it all the time. This is called Sofuse. So I got a bundle, a trial bundle. I have Sofuse and Sofuse Plus. Let me check. Let me check. Let me actually look at my notes. Go ahead, touch those. Um, this feels like fabric. Okay. And this feels like fabric. No, it's fat. It's woven. Okay. Yeah. They are both woven. Um, like oh, I have to. I, let me read you this from the website. Yeah. Okay, this so on good. the website, this one, the So Fuse. Yeah, it feels um, a little heavier than the It says, oh no, wait a minute. I want to read you this one first. This is So Fuse Plus. Mm -hmm. It says, and I, I quote this from the website, and I don't know why this makes me laugh. It's the perfect hand feeling after fusing. It's very plump. See, plump is in. <laughs> yeah. Plump is in. Plump is in. Just so you all know. Yay! Yay! It's, very it's very plump. I don't I don't know why that word makes me laugh. Because I don't ever I never why call you would use it look at my bag. It's so plump. plump. But it's cute. It's very cute. I'm not I'm not making fun of anybody. I think it's adorable. Very plump, sturdy, and suitable for cotton fabric. That's the plus. Now the sofuse, the regular sofuse, basically says the same thing, except it doesn't say sturdy because it's a little bit lighter. So for my research and what I've been reading, this yeah. is an alternative to SF-101. I was gonna say, that's what it feels like. So we're gonna see what it looks like. Could you find the SF-101 actually, in this pile? there are several people here that say they use it. And do you they, like it? Would you prefer it. it over SF-101? I love, love, love Sofuse okay. and Sofuse Plus. It adheres wonderfully. Two layers of Sofuse Plus is like Decoville light and doesn't wrinkle. Okay, well, I can order these if this is what I know what's coming. If this is what we need. <laughs> we know. I don't Nobody's know I don't know how soon it's gonna get here. I will say I do not know. I believe her name is Monica that owns Castine Handcrafted. She is so organized in her wording. She tells you when you order it wholesale, when to order it, how it's going to come, what's going to really? happen, wow. when you have to get your order in by. I'm, I'm impressed. Apparently they have a monthly subscription to well, it. Well, look at that. Somebody's got that. So then you guys don't need me. You can tell me yes, that too. You, you need us. You need us. Well, I know we want it. If you don't need it from me, that's okay. Yes, you do. Okay, so let's try, and where's my fabric? The answer was yes, they agree. Okay. We need it from you. Well, then I think it's going to be on the list. Do you see my scrap? Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm using cotton from now. So this is the Sofuse, which is supposed to be just like SF-101. My iron went to sleep, so let me turn wake it back up, on. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay, give that a second. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Um, it's 100% cotton woven interfacing comparable to SF-101, but a lot of bag makers say it's better and adheres better and more evenly. So fuse on the website was five dollars a yard versus Shape Flex, which is four fifty. So pretty yeah, comparable. Right, yeah. Um, let me see the width on little, this. Maybe a little bit heavier. Maybe. Um, maybe I didn't. A hair heavier than SF I didn't write the width down, so. but let me see here. It looks pretty. Yeah. 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 So that looks like forty five. Yeah. I did not write it down. I don't know. I tried so hard to be organized for you today. <laughs> I think I did better than normal, but we'll see. Oh, and it also works great on vinyl. 
I, and that is another thing that I have heard as well. So let's see. I'm not reading her instructions. I'm doing it the Jessica way as I normally do. Because if it's going to be hard for me to do, chances are I'm not going to use it. That's just how it goes. So I'm hearing it the same way that I did SF101. You need a bigger table. I need a lot of things. <laughs> oh, that adhered nicely. Mm-hmm. It does... It feels that much beefier why is i don't but i don't know how else to explain it, say, it felt like a, a teeny, teeny tiny bit tiny little yeah. bit you feel them but like not not yeah. so much that it's going it's to change anything though. very no. flexible very soft it, very drapey so if you are using sf 101 in clothing i don't see why you couldn't use the so fuse yeah the names are going to get confusing because i have another fuse so we have <laughs> shape flex and we have so fuse. So I like it. I like it. Let's yeah. see. This is the plus. So it doesn't quite feel like decor bond to me. It feels lighter, but it definitely is heavier it's, than shape flex. It feels almost more papery. Like it's crisper. I wonder what it's like when you let's, let's see what see. it feels like. Well, when you here, feel I'm it. gonna cut this in half because did somebody say they like two layers of this? Okay, we're gonna do one layer and see. This is fun. And Pat Hale, I'm really sorry I didn't get my white coat. Yeah, I didn't know if really. this was really an and experiment. And my goggle. I always have goggles on. That's what my friend Stephanie calls her glasses. She calls them her goggles. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. That's oh. firmer than I thought it was going to be. Still yeah. still soft. Oh, yeah. hmm. I like it. Yeah, I like it. So if you use plus. Yeah. Okay. And it's fast. My stomach's growling. Where is the decor bond? There. Nope. That's fleece. Let's see. Decor bond. There it is. I feel like the decor bond's still a little, a little bit, bit stiffer, different. but I like it. Now let me try two layers because one of you said that. So let's see how we how we like that together. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take much to It really, it really, really <laughs> doesn't. It really does not. At least I'm entertained by something, yeah. you know? So let me let that cool for a few seconds. It's hot. Okay. I know. Did you know that when you iron something, it gets hot? Just so you know. Oh. Oh, I like that. I like it. Wiggle them. Wiggle them. No, let me find. Yeah. Where's my gecko bill? Wiggle them. Wiggle them. Oh, gosh, yeah. Right? Okay. I like that. That's more deco bill. Let me try. It's very similar. So two layers of so fuse, very similar to Decoville Light. Price wise, let's see. Hold on. Still wrinkles, not yeah. bad. Not one's no. not worse than the other. So fuse plus is five twenty five a yard. Remember, it is cotton based. Where Decoville Light is ten dollars a yard, and the so fuse this plus is forty five, isn't it? Is that's forty five. Forty five. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 45. 45. So okay. It's less expensive. Well, it looks like we might be getting new interfacing. I think we might. Because I'm pretty sure I can't get the other ones um, wholesale. But it, we're going to try them anyway. Does it wrinkle when you fold it? Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> everything does. It does. Yeah, it's cotton. Say, yeah. Does your shirt wrinkle? You know? So, I'm, but I don't, I don't think that it's more or less than the Decoville Light. You can still see the creases in both of them. Mm -hmm. The Decoville light might be a little bit less. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I haven't sewed with it, so I will sew with it, but I like it. Somebody wants you to make a gift that's wiggle. That, <laughs> wiggle. Wiggle it. Wiggle it. Um, okay, so here. Oh, here's a suggestion, though. Oh, when you give use it, to it me. on vinyl, after you iron it, lay the vinyl flat and let it cool so it turns flat. Sorry, that is a very good suggestion. And thank you because I don't do all the things, but I want to know all the things. Just because I write patterns and carry supplies, I'm still a bag maker. I still want to know all the stuff. <laughs> so, okay, so that was so fuse. I will say, and this is nothing against their company, um, the shipping and the processing was a little bit slow, as is some businesses. So if this is something that you are ordering um, or if you're waiting for me to get it, it's not going to be something we have on Monday. So it definitely was a little bit slower, I'm assuming, and I might be wrong, that she is also a small business like us where we just can't get everything out at once. And you guys understand and you're patient. So I did order this before the retreat, and it took a little bit to come in. 
It says I ordered it on December 13th. Mm. And I want to say it came in after the holidays, I think. But I do That's appreciate... Awful, it's not awful, especially with the holidays. She did have it on her website what her processing time is, too, which I thought was yeah. really nice. I don't do that because as soon as I do that, something changes. Yeah. I'm like, we ship on these days. And then Barb Merlin were like, we have to change our schedule. And then I, it's just a pain. So, you know, it, it will always happen. So I this... just had a baby, apparently. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> I don't know you, but congratulations. I hear that's something just people like to do. Girl, just, yeah. just I, I hear people like to have babies. I don't know. Yeah. I like dogs. Um, okay, so this one. <laughs> Ooh, you haven't even opened this I one haven't. yet? It came in yesterday. Took a lot of self-restraint. I did not open it. But I have to tell you, the, the grammar police part of me, the inner, the email I got with oh, this God. was driving me crazy. And it's not on her. It's okay. The name of the company that I ordered this bundle from is Got Interfacing? Question mark. It's a cute name. The email says, your Got Interfacing shipment has shipped. But what I see is your got interfacing question mark. No. <laughs> it has shipped. And I was like, why does that drive me so crazy? It's not her fault, but it's the way the email came across. And I was like, your got interfacing. Who can't talk? Oh, never mind. It's the name Maybe of the company. the company. So I ordered from Got Interfacing. I ordered a sample pack. And from what I can tell, these are not available to me wholesale, but I don't want to try them anyway because it's fun. But holy, you want to talk about 10 pounds of you know what in a five pound bag. Holy moly, this is in there. I really we want to know their pain. I want to say another <laughs> word right now, real bad. Okay. <laughs> there have been Bye, several Barb. times that Barb has said to me, come here. And I hold the bag and Barb shoves stuff into the bag. And I'm pretty sure that this must have also happened. And her name's also Barbara. So I'm pretty sure it's like a thing. It's a barber Could thing. Be. Could okay, be. so two of the things we got are yeah, Decoville Light and Heavy, which we already talked about. But, okay. Oh, and a cute little card. Okay. <laughs> what we got, I'm going to get rid of these because we already talked about those. Okay. Oh, sorry. We have Woven Fuse. So we went from So Fuse to Woven oh, Fuse. Geez. Now you understand what it's like trying to name court colors. So now we have Woven oh, Fuse. Woven Fuse 2. Oh, and she labeled them. Thank God. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Woven Fuse. Woven Fuse 2. And Lux Sew. I'm going to start with Lux Sew just because I wanted to because it just sounds so luxurious. Lux Sew says on the website, it's a cross between foam and fleece and you can sub it for either. So if a pattern calls for foam or fleece, you can use Lux Sew. And it's very soft. It feels like cotton um, gauze. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, is this fusible? Um, okay. Um, I might have might gotten some. Batting. I might have gotten something like, non-fusible. This looks like it's non-fusible. Yeah. And somebody out there is yelling at me, going, "It's not." Yeah. So let's find out. This does not feel like it has glue on it. No. So let's find out. If it doesn't have glue, I'm not into it. Ooh, and I melted the side of the iron. Yeah. That's not fusible. Okay. It's not fusible. So for me, that's going to be a no yeah. because I'm lazy. <laughs> so I like yeah, fusible. Oops, sorry. And I got a little, I got a little, it, um, I hit it with the iron by accident and it, it melted. Uh, it melted oh, a lot. Oh, dear. Um, this one is going to be a hard it. pass for me. Not my thing. Okay. That's okay. You use it in if it melts. Well, you're not supposed to fuse it. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, even if you... Tip number one, don't iron uh, that side. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to I mean, touch it, but it, it if I just, like, iron a bag... I'm just thinking, that, like, for table... No, it's fine. Or... It's fine. It flattened right out. It does stick, stick, but it's not... I don't... Is it fusible? I don't understand. I don't know. It's not stuck stuck, but it stuck. Yeah. But it's not stuck stuck. Does that make sense to anyone it's else but me? Just because it's melting the fibers I don't know. or because there's glue on it? I'm very confused, but I'm going to say it's not fusible. It but man, that it, gets it, flat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be a no for me. Yeah. I don't like that one. So, okay, that was fun. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, that one is 38 and a half inches wide. Who that comes that up with these things? That is it. And it's 650 a yard. So for me... I'm going to go with my 44-inch wide fusible fleece, fleece for $8 a yard. That's it's just me. It's a sew-in, somebody said. Thank you. I just figured that out the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I'm gonna skip those. All right, so let's. I wanna iron something. Well, this has fuse in the name, so yeah. we're gonna go okay, with it. We'll go we're with gonna that. say it's fusible, and we're about to find out. Let me. Okay, it's shining. <laughs> okay, this just almost went downhill real quick. I mean, that doesn't take much, but okay. Let me cut some pieces. This is woven fuse and woven fuse two. I can't keep track of all these yeah. names. I didn't realize there were so many different ones out there. I didn't either. Yeah, welcome to my world. <laughs> I guess because we the rely on you. The things I do for you. you. We use the, what you tell us. The things yes. I do for all of you. Out exactly. There. And I know you appreciate me. Mm -hmm. You don't like puke emojis in my videos. Okay, so. Oh, the website says to not iron on it. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> we don't follow the directions. <laughs> oh, is please tell me that's one of our regulars and not someone new that oh, just yeah. now thinks I'm a no, total nut job. No. Okay, you guys already knew that. So, you know, we're two years in at this point. Okay, so. Let's <laughs> I'm just gonna laugh at myself. <laughs> Is this fusible? No. Don't find out the hard way. I'm gonna write a book someday on things that you should just not do in your life. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. I'm gonna tell you what I've done that you definitely shouldn't try. So, once again, I do it my own way. Let's look at the stats here. And we have the iron on a ruler. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's not on the ruler. It's Standing up. It's on standing <laughs> up. It's totally fine. Okay. Um, so woven fuse, this one, is 100% cotton. It also comes in black. Have you guys ever used black interfacing? I'm just curious. I've just never thought to use it. I know it makes sense. Black but batting. Black bat. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Excuse me. That was gross. Um, woven <laughs> fuse, 450 a yard. So we've got woven fuse at 450, shape flex at 450, sew fuse at five. So very similar. Now I lost all the things. Where's the where's the one I just did? Um, <laughs> where did it go? This, there this? it is. Here, no, I covered it up. Okay, so, okay, shape flex. We've got sew fuse. This is gonna get confusing. And woven fuse. They feel the same. I don't feel a difference. I think the sew fuse and the woven fuse feel almost identical to me. What do you think? Like they don't feel any different. They both feel a minuscule amount heavier than yeah. Shape Flex, but they both feel the same to me. Same. It adhered really they nicely. Love, yeah. I like it. it. It it was really I like that. Um, let's try. This is the woven fuse two, also 100% cotton, 45 inches wide, 550 a yard. This one would be I guess compared to this they feel see the sew fuse and the woven fuse i'm not feeling a difference between the sew fuse plus and woven fuse two and the woven fuse and the sew fuse i don't feel a difference <laughs> <laughs> and so, anybody else have a fusible i need to try somebody so, says same price but you get more woven fuse because it's wider correct i think yes i, I think, think <laughs> you're on the Good same job, page Pam. as me woven fuse products are 45 inches wide so fuse products no i think they're also 45 didn't we i didn't look it up oh hit it oh no you're on facebook no. oh, <laughs> what do you want? i forgot what you were doing no i think you actually i think they're the you same look something up? no i don't care um <laughs> okay whatever it doesn't really matter i think they're the same because this they look like they're both 45 yeah, yeah you get them. Yeah, yeah they're actually both the same um yeah. very comparable in price from what I can tell, I can't order woven fuse except as just a bag maker. I can't order it for you guys. I don't know the like proprietary stuff behind it. I don't know if Barb got interfacing invented. I don't know any of that stuff. Um, but I would say if I'm using SF101, either of these would be a fine sub. I do like the sew fuse a little better than the shape flex. It is a tiny bit heavier mm -hmm. and not in a bad way, not in a way that's gonna make a difference. And that so fuse plus is kind of nice. I was like, is it plus or two? I don't know. I don't know. So fuse <laughs> the sequel. I like it. So I would be happy to carry either or both if that's something you guys are interested in. I will have to start using them more. Chances are that and Decoville, they're not gonna be incorporated into my patterns. But if you want to, you can always ask me. I just have to make things easier for shipping, for kits, and for our sanity. Because if I start putting things in that runs out of stock, it's a pain. And decor bond, 
has not failed me yet in being in stock. Now that I said yeah. that, it won't be. Yeah. But so far, J. Corbon and Fleece, I just have to place an order and I can usually get it in a week. It's that Decoville that, man. And mm. SoFuse has kind of like a long um, shipping period to it. But if you guys like them and you want them, let me know. Um, I think Marlene will be happy that I'm not ordering more zippers. So, I mean, you know, there's that. <laughs> I only got two yeah. two new zippers. They're, I can sneak them in. They didn't For even now. have to know. They didn't even have to know. Oh, no, we would have So, known. I didn't order any more hardware. That takes up a lot of room, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for now. So, there's that. So, that was our interfacing talk. Um, let me see. I answered Elena's question. And Sue um, Smith had said that pressing 809 is one of her weaknesses in bag making. And I hope that maybe some of my tips helped. I don't remember if Sue uses a clapper or not, but I, you know, I understand again that yeah, well, does. Yeah. I know that a press, uh, a t-shirt press is not for everybody. It's not going mm -hmm. to fit in everyone's studios. I don't have a big, like at home, I couldn't fit it. I don't have any place at home. Here, I barely do. So I totally understand, but try the iron and try using a clapper. And I really do think it makes a huge difference. And if you're doing a really big piece and you have like books or whatever, if you need to put something on there, it's that, that pressure mm -hmm. and the consistent heat. And one thing, and I probably didn't say this, but I just want to mention it. My iron is on linen cotton. It's as hot, hot as, as it goes. It goes. And it has steam. I always use steam. I get asked that a lot when I press things. I don't ever change the settings on that iron, no matter what I'm pressing. Even if I ha ugh, have to press a piece of clothing, <laughs> and sometimes I ruin things. That's why I don't. I don't iron clothes. Take the water out of my iron either. <laughs> no. And there's all these things about use this kind of water, yeah. empty it out, do this. It, it's a sunbeam iron. When it dies, I just get a new one. So you know, I don't have sentimental um, attachment to it. <laughs> one last question. Yes. What do your zippers look like? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, whoever just asked that, I'm pretty sure Marlene just quit. Um, they look like a giant mess. Um, they are bagged. They are in bins. They are on rolls. They are on rolls that fall apart. They are hanging off of things. We trip over them. They're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. They look like this when you just cut a piece. Yeah. Um, well, We'll do another tour in the near future. Um, Can we clean it up first? When, no. No. when Marlene is not feeling suicidal, um, we will do that. Um, but the zippers are just a gigantic mess mm -hmm. everywhere. And I'm just making sure I didn't forget anything else I want to tell you guys. Retreats, restocks, sofus, pl plump. <laughs> if you want a plump bag. It's probably the only thing plump I really bird. want. But okay. <laughs> Well, and I wrote, I wrote myself a note because I make myself laugh. I said, when you're making a bag, the, the material you use on the outside, your fabric, your cork, whatever, it's your outfit, right? It's your, <laughs> it's, it's your outfit. And your hardware, you have it's, a way with words. it's your jewelry. <laughs> it's your accessories. It's functional, but it's also, it's your jewelry. It's your, that pair of earrings that makes the outfit. So interfacing to me as the structure is your underpants. Because that, you have to wear them. You gotta wear them. You gotta wear your You gotta wear your undergarments. And depending on what you're wearing, you might have to wear different kinds. So you Does make the structure. Wear journals anymore? You know, shapewear. <laughs> your bras so that is how i look at bags so i pick out my outfit i decide what underpants i need and then i throw some accessories on and that's how i get a bag and that no bags is all i have for you today and you will never look at interfacing the same again i hope you enjoyed this and next week guess what guess what we're only on to our third video of the year and guess what these two are leaving me because oh, they're going to a retreat. retreat. So you just get me next week. So I will probably be just as loud, but I will be talking to myself. But it's okay. <laughs> we'll see what we're doing. And for the rest of this year, please, if you have things you want me to cover or cover again or whatever, email me. Leave a comment on Facebook. Don't message me on Facebook. I don't like Facebook messages. Oh, God, I hate it. Tell me what you want. Can you go over something again? Can you talk about this? Even if it's one little tiny thing that you think isn't a big thing, tell me, please, because I am always happy for your ideas. I don't want to repeat myself if you don't want to hear the ideas again, so tell me. And that is all. <laughs> I made up for last week. It is 1219. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, Charlie uses lacy interfacing. Lacy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> for those special bags. For those you special know. bags. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Several comments about the underwear. Underwear. Well, I mean, think about it. It is, you know, you need them, and the, the nicer they are, the nicer it looks on the outside. Am thongs I right? Versus, thongs versus granny pants. I, right? Listen, I like granny pants. But anyway, bags. we're going to call it a day. Underwire bags. Barb, end this before it gets banned from, from YouTube. I will see you guys next week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye guys.